My name is Callie Barnett. I was born and raised in Garden City, Kansas. I'm Southwest Kansas proud. And all of my family, I'm a third generation farmer's daughter. And for the last 12 years, I've been a music teacher. I didn't plan to go into politics, but I know how much we need a change. I know how much Kansans and the first district of Kansas deserves a change and people who will fight for them. So today I stand before you to announce that I am running for the first district of Kansas House of Representatives for Congress. Thank you. It feels great to be able to say that. There's a lot to prepare, and it, it just means the world to finally say it. So I want to start at the beginning of my life, sharing a little bit about who I am and what I've been through. I grew up going to the farm with my dad. We would jump in our his red truck. He always had a red pickup truck. And we would blast the music and sing together, either to KJ Isle Radio or the Beach Boys. And our favorite song was Barbara Ann, because that's my mother's name. And we would just go down the highway on our way to the field and sing, ba 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 And then my dad's part was, ba ba take my hand. And he would get like squinty eyebrows when it got to the really hard part. And I would think, wow, he can sing really high. He was a tenor. <laughs> it was wonderful. We would stop on the side of the road and pick sunflowers, take them home to my mom. And from the time I was little and found my voice, I learned, obviously, that I loved to sing. I loved that it was a way that I could share my joy with others. I remember my first solo I sang when I was five years old at the First Christian Church in Garden City, Kansas, in front of a lot of people. And I stood up there in my beautiful dress and sang, If I were a butterfly, I think the Lord for giving me wings. And I was hooked from tap dancing to band camp to singing at church with my father. Sunday mornings, he would wake me up, even when I was really little, and he'd say, come on, let's go sing for some people. And most of the time, it wasn't even planned. We would just go to different retirement communities, and we would sing, we would lead worship. And it, it was something that I learned when I sp shared those experiences, then I could benefit so much joy for myself and bring so much more joy to other people. Um, in high school, I started really singing at weddings with my dad. And it was just the most amazing experience. As I started learning more and more about music and being able to share that with my father, it was just incredible. We had an experience um, where we were asked to sing at a family friend's wedding. When I was 17, um, I'll never forget that day in particular. My dad actually chose the song that he wanted me to sing. It was called A Time For Us. And when I sang, there was just something different about that moment on that day. And I remember finishing singing and sitting down next to my dad and him looking at me with tears in his eyes and saying, Callie, I'm just so proud of you. Thank you for doing that. And I, you just sounded so beautiful today. He sang a song, and he, he just looked at my mom the entire time and sang a, a love song. A few hours after the wedding, my father passed away from a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. It's hard to comprehend when you have lived your life with this pillar in your family who's the picture of health and strength, working hard every day on the farm to make sure he could provide for our family and in an instant, it's just, it's just gone. I want to share the backstory with that because it's really important. Most of the farmland that my family had was owned by another person. That person decided to sell their land a few months before his death. It immediately put my family in financial turmoil. A few weeks before he passed away, my family had to file for bankruptcy. A few days after his funeral, we had to 
have an auction to sell off all of his farming equipment. I know it's the heart attack that killed him, but it was the stress that our family experienced that was the ultimate cause. I share that story with you because I want you to know that every single day I carry that with me. And a representative should be someone like you and me who knows what our Kansas farmers go through and how devastating things of that nature can be for our families. And I want you to know that I will be a person who takes that pain and that trauma that my family experienced and move forward. In my life during that time, that's exactly what I did. I was 17. It was my junior year of high school when it happened in my senior year. I took all of that and I just continued to move forward. I was chosen to be Dolly in Hello Dolly my senior year and I was so proud. I had this moment where it was like I channeled all of that energy and I walked out in this bright red dress. Well, hello, Harry. Well, hello, Harry. It's so nice to have you home where you belong. And I just knew I was going to end up on Broadway. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> I set my eyes on that. I, I was pr crowned prom queen. I ended up uh, making it into schools in, in Chicago and New York City for music theater. I ultimately chose to go to Friends University in Wichita for music theater, and I don't regret it one bit. It was in Friends University where I met Dr. Cecil Riney. He's one of the most pivotal people I've ever met in my life. And a few weeks into school, he pulled me aside and said, Callie, I've met you. I've seen you. You should be a teacher. And I said, what? I like to perform. And he said, you know what? The best performers, the best teachers are performers. You'll do it for your students every single day, and it will be really meaningful and impactful for your life. And guess what? He was right. Yeah. During that time also, I had my arm pulled and I got talked into doing the Miss Garden City pageant. And I had no idea that doing that experience would be so similar to politics. <laughs> when I ended up winning Miss Garden City, not only did I get to wear the tiara and have all the waves and do the parade and wear the bikini and the high heels, I had to choose a platform issue. And I'm sure you can probably guess from what had happened in my life what it was. My grandmother last week shared with me, she said, you know, Callie, I was thinking about this experience and how much Miss Kansas has prepared you for this. And she said, it always made me realize how different you were from the other candidates because when every single one of you would talk about your issue and it would come to you, you would say, I didn't choose my platform. My platform chose me. I would stand in front of people and talk to them about heart disease and how to prevent it and the early signs. And I was, I was fueled by knowing that if maybe I had had that talk with my dad, that he'd still be alive today. So I'm confident if I can stand in a red velvet bikini and six and a half inch high heels and rhinestones <laughs> and do that, I can at least stand here today confidently and know that I can be a voice for you and I will take that passion and everything that I've done in my life and I will listen and I will be that voice for you and I will work very hard for you in Congress. So I can't help but tell you a little bit about my teaching career and how it brought me to the moment where I said there needs to be more teachers like me in Congress. The person I said that to went, and I said, oh, I guess I can do it. <laughs> so teaching for me has been the most beautiful, rewarding experience. Some of the memories that I've had with students, especially the really little ones, where we get to experience this joy for music, um, will be something I carry for the rest of my life. And even though I've closed the chapter on that for a while, that also fuels me. The education system did not serve me as a teacher. It did not support me. When I worked in Wichita, every single year, I made less money. I was during the Brownback tax experiment where I felt the harsh realities of that system and how broken it was. 
I was not allowed to get a raise. At that time, I went to Wichita State, received my master's. I received special education training. I received special trainings on how to teach music. When I do something, I only give a thousand percent. That's all I know how to do. And for 12 years, I would most days come home feel so defeated because I didn't think I was doing enough. When I started, I had 24 students in a class. Wichita kept cutting schools, cutting back positions. I started going to town hall meetings, school board meetings, and fighting for music teachers and why music should be in schools, how important it is. At that time, I was fighting for my job. I was fighting for children to have music. I didn't feel like there was many people fighting for me. We have to support the future generation. We have to support teachers. We have to give them mental health care. We have to stop giving them 24 students in a class and then raising it to 41, which was my last year. That's m probably more people in this room. Imagine five-year-olds and trying to safely control them and prepare them for teaching. It's, it's just, frankly, dangerous. So I'm sure there are many things that we can probably disagree on. But if you would participate with me, I would love to see what we can agree on. So raise your hand if you have things that you are thankful for. Yes. <laughs> Two hands. <laughs> raise your hand if you are glad you're here today. Yes. 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 <laughs> that, that one was, was kind of for me. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here today, too. <laughs> raise your hand if you've put off going to the doctor because of the cost. Raise your hand if you're paying a medical bill that you don't know if you'll ever actually be able to pay it off. Raise your hand if you're paying off student loans. Raise your hand if you would love to go to school or get a new trade if it were more affordable. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you are a teacher or if you know one. Should be everybody, you know me now. <laughs> Raise your hand if you've ever called your current representative in office. Raise your hand if you felt like they listened to you. Look around the room. Raise your hand if you would like to elect more women to Congress. <laughs> so how about we do that? <laughs> So I get a lot of questions about why I'm running, what qualifies me to run, and I would love to tell you the thing that I think I've discovered, what it takes to qualify to run. There's three things. Hard work, a team of support around you, and a whole lot of grit. And I'm standing in front of you to tell you I think that's exactly what it takes to be a representative of our people. And I want you to know that I give 110% to a fault, to everything that I do. I'm sure we all agree that we need infrastructure. Imagine if we had train systems like they do in Europe, where we could take a train from here to Garden City, to Emporia, to Manhattan, to Colby, in only a matter of time. Imagine how that would change our healthcare needs as well, especially, and most importantly, if it were affordable. We know that we need to move towards renewable energy sources. We need to teach our farmers and have incentives for them to do that. We need to take earth conscious decisions today. It starts small. Taking those straws that we use all the time and using reusable ones. I carry them in my purse. I give them away every chance that I can and encourage my friends and family to do so. We all can agree that healthcare is our mind, our body, and our soul. We have to support mental health care programs. We have to support ending food deserts and getting food, healthy food, to our communities and treating food like it's medicine. We have to take care of our soul. Mindfulness is a buzzword that has come around, but we've all known those things for a long time. It's taking care of ourselves, loving ourselves, and most importantly, loving the people that are around us, because that is who supports us. We need to continue the fight for equal pay for women and people of color. Yeah. Yeah. We need a tax structure 
and a, an economy that supports people like you and me who work very hard, and right now it's only benefiting the 1%. So in this campaign, we are spreading a message of love. I'm here to announce and tell you that that is what Cali for Kansas is all about. Our communities are rich. They are diverse. It's who we are. Growing up in Garden City, one of the most diverse cities in the United States, makes me proud. I can't imagine my childhood without the lively food and culture and people and languages. And love is about inclusion. It's about including those people and learning and respecting our immigrant population and not excluding. So I'm asking you to have difficult conversations. Just like we do in, in, as a teacher, in our classroom, we have to have zero tolerance policy when it comes to racism. There's many, many forms, and if we don't call out its ugly face, we're including that process. We must exclude it and have a zero tolerance process. So I'm running for Congress to be that voice for our community and our people and spread that message of love. And most importantly, your representative that you ultimately choose should be your voice. I want to be someone that you could sit across the table from, have an honest conversation with, and say, you know, I'm struggling with this. Do you think we could pass some legislation or at a minimum bring a conversation that would help us, that might help my family? And I would hope that you would be comfortable with doing that for me. So earlier we found a common ground and I want us to build upon that. I encourage you to talk to your friends and your family and your neighbors and say, you know what, Cali for Kansas is spreading a message of love. For me, it's not about party. Yes, I ultimately have to choose one as a candidate. But for me, it's about love. It's about what I can do for you. And when I look at democratic ideals, supporting equal pay, the need for infrastructure, supporting education, all of those things make sense to me. And that's what um, being a person with good morals and intentions to me is all about. So this is only the beginning. This campaign is fueled by a lot of love, a lot of miles on our vehicle, and you know that a campaign is only funded by, by money. If you would please take a moment to visit califorkansas.com if our viewers would take a moment to go to califorkansas.com and support, it would make all the difference in the world. People across our country can do this. It is time we send someone, and it could be a monthly contribution. I encourage you to donate $20.20. That's less than a dollar a day. You could ensure that you are fueling our campaign and our positive message. So, we're only getting started. I look forward to the next 15 months of being able to listen and learn, building policy that will reflect us as a community and our great state of Kansas. Thank you for being here today. At this time, I can take a few questions. being here and you have a wonderful team beside you, behind you, in front of you, everywhere. I agree. <laughs> Probably not Ruth, but they, they seem like sweet and good. They are. They're the best. <laughs> I have no idea. I usually do pretty close attention to politics, but do you have any uh, competition in the climate? No As of right now, I do not. I do not. That's a simple <coughs> answer, actually. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Hi. Welcome so much, and I think you have an absolute secret campaign weapon you can see. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I have a question because I am actually in a fourth generation farm family mm -hmm. here in Kansas, and the fourth generation would be my nephew. And I'm almost hoping that they don't watch this because I've heard some stories of how desperately they're struggling. And I also come from a divided family. 
politically. Mm -hmm. They probably voted for your, your hopeful comment in the future here. And what can I say to them to convince them to, to look to a different direction than they have already voted for and has not worked for them? Great question. Thank you for asking it. You know, it is, it is the, the conversation that I'm having with close family, close friends, and I've already had with myself. I was also a registered Republican. As I taught mostly in urban districts, I started to see how powerful it was when President Obama was elected as president. I remember the moment that I put up the pictures um, after he was inaugurated and my students walking in and saying, that's our president. And I already shared a little bit earlier about saying, I really started looking at the democratic ideals and how they aligned with me and what I know is important to fight for. And so I think that is a starting conversation. But more importantly, sitting across the table and having real and honest conversation about what we want for change and how badly we need it and leaving party out of it and having discussions about who the people that we elect matter, what they stand for matters. And it can't be about party anymore. It has to be about what are we doing in our daily lives? What are, who are we electing? And how can we make a difference in all of that process? So be brave, be courageous. I know it's not easy. And it's what I have to do to win. Thank you so much. Of course. <laughs> the first district of Kansas population over the last few years has gone down. And a lot of that is because of jobs. Could you give us a? Uh, just a beginning of your vision of what can be done to create jobs and, and to help Western and Central and even now into some of Eastern Kansas uh, grow jobs and grow a better life for the people who live there? Absolutely. You know, I had a discussion with Dwayne West, who is a former mayor of Garden City, Kansas. Um, we've discussed uh, different things um, about the future of Southwest Kansas. and. One of the ideas that he has set before the community college many times and gotten rejected is allowing students, the idea of allowing students who have been in the community or people who have been in the community a minimum of three years could go to the community college for free. Then they could work in the community for a minimum of three years. He did all of the math and he found out that it would greatly impact Southwest Kansas, Garden City, and it only makes sense. We have to build programs like that where people and students are encouraged to stay in Southwest Kansas and get a trade that they can have a, a lifestyle and a life that will sustain them, they can build a family from. And for me, education truly is the future. We can no longer be faced as an 18 year old who's graduated from high school and had mostly, for most people, a free education, and then expect them to graduate with 30, 40, 100, $200,000 in debt and expect that they're going to ever be able to pay for it. So we want to talk about boosting the economy and creating jobs. We do it right there in education. We have schools all across the great state of Kansas, all across our nation, that should be providing skills for our future leaders. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Callie. Hello. Thank you very much for coming and letting us know that you're ready to go yes. and get it done. Because uh, I've been a teacher. And, Thank you. Uh, my interest is in lifestyles that uh, can prevent uh, mental illness, physical illness, and, and, and uh, the social needs for love yes and for caring and in this age of technology so much of that gets lost yeah uh, i i hope you can help others 
focus on prevention yes. of all these problems because that's been my goal and and my well my need <laughs> and my goal to keep at least me healthy all these many many years yes and and to educate my that's that's kind of what I do in the community is <laughs> talk about uh, healthy lifestyles. Yes, yes, absolutely. I know in, in education, the buzzword now is SEL curriculum. And one of the things I plan to do as part of my campaign is also talking to children and young adults because they're our future. I know I, I was on a plane um, to DC last week and I sat next to a teacher who said she really wants to bring a national training program to the teachers in her district in Georgia. And she's been rejected several times because the school doesn't have the money to pay for it. Imagine if we had a federally funded incentive program where teachers could get the health care that they need and um, work environments were supportive of them and training programs that taught them how to take care of their mind, body, and soul. Imagine how incredible that would be. And it's empowering to know that that's happening in our schools and it needs to continue to help our students because I know firsthand, seeing it in action in my last school, um, one of the songs that we taught as our school song was, we love and care, that's compassion, compassion. Being the person that I am, uniqueness, uniqueness. Trying new ideas, innovation, innovation. That was just part of our core values and that's something that we need to teach and we put into practice. And if a child hurts another child's feelings, you say, can you show them some compassion? We all make mistakes. And then I could see it actually working. When you teach people how to do that and put it into practice, it works. So thank you. So it's evident from uh, your presentation that one of your skills will be very handy. Uh, you probably will need a rock band at some point. <laughs> so when when, you, you when I come next time, would you like me to bring my ukulele? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> How about the Star Spangled Banner? Yeah. <laughs> that would work. So uh, I, I very much appreciate the positive uh, tone, and, and more than tone, but the positive heart to your campaign. Yeah. And uh, I'm impressed with that. I think the constituents in the first district will be as well. Uh, <clears throat> sooner or later, though, you're going to have to address the present occupant of that position, who is in a caring, a caring profession. Mm -hmm. and the editorial comment who has not demonstrated that. But I think my question will be, if part of your appeal is that you are in a caring profession, how, do you, how will you distinguish yourself in terms of policy and, and pointing out what has not been done by this representative that will be done by you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a part of my life motto is to not tear down others, but build them up. And so I know that it's important to highlight what has not been done for Kansans. But right now in my announcement tour, my message is look what I can do for you. And to me, that is the message. And whether I speak face to face to the current incumbent or not, I hope my message speaks to him as well. I hope it speaks to our listeners. I hope it speaks to our community members and certainly our first district. Um, constituents and it urges them to take a personal change in their life and vote for the right people. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> An earlier gentleman uh, spoke about the problem of decline of population in our rural mm -hmm. areas. Uh, your area, Dodge City, Gar Garden City, mm -hmm. It's, uh, those are a couple of counties that actually have had increases in population, and a lot of that is due to immigration. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear what your approach to immigration would be should you be elected. Our present so-called representative, our present congressman has done nothing but follow party lines, and he's done nothing to improve the immigration situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I most importantly, and I know I'm reiterating this point, but a message of inclusion and 
you are our community, you are a part of our community, and we are doing things to support you and love you, is my immigration policy. I know that when it comes to the nuts and bolts of writing policy, I know that I will always, always remember my roots, where I'm from, and vote for those people. And for me, it comes across, the thing that's important is what I brought up earlier, having those conversations, finding common ground, and making people feel welcome. Some of these community members have been a part of our community, and I'm talking about immigrants, for a very, very long time. And it's past time. It's too late for a lot of those conversations to be made up, but it's not too late to start those conversations now. Hi, Kelly. Hi. Kaylee. Callie. Sorry. No, Callie. Callie. I had it right the first Callie, time. Callie, like California, except yeah. it's with gotcha. a K because gotcha. I'm in Kansas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never said that before. <laughs> well, I too was born and raised in Garden City, Kansas. Yay! Dwayne West's son, Nathan, was my first official boyfriend. <laughs> wow. We held hands and it lasted for Wow. A but anyway, um, so. Heavy on my heart today is the topic of all the shootings over the past few days, with El Paso only being one of three or four that I have heard about. And with all that's going on at the border and the, I'm sorry, concentration camps is what I'm going to call them, you mentioned the problem of racism. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I feel like Trump has only made that worse. He's yeah. like opened the gates for all these people that I didn't know existed that are so horribly racist and hateful. And it seems like these shootings, since August 1st, I counted, I found a website this afternoon as we were traveling, 140 dead, 283 wounded, just since August 1st. My question to you is, what can we do? What are your ideas for helping to stimmy this, this flow of hate that is just all around us? And, you know, gun reform is a very touchy topic. Yes. And I know there's no easy answers. Mm -hmm. But the fact that these, many of these angry white men that are tied, a lot of them, to right wing white supremacy groups, how do we stop this? How do we begin to address that problem? because it is out of control and it feels hopeless to me. What are your ideas for helping us to, to slow down the death caused by these people? I'm really glad that you brought that up because it is something I'm certain is heavy on all of our hearts today. I know turning on the TV today, opening up my phone last night, it's really hard putting yourself in the mental state to be positive and so excited about this announcement and be mentally and physically prepared for that and have such horrific news. This is not, these events are new, but the topic is not. And for too long, we have not been supporting mental health care. And for too long, we have not been teaching and working towards gun responsibility. So for me, those are two issues that I will absolutely support. I grew up with my father having guns, using guns, my grandfather, the other farmers in my family. It was a safety issue as a farmer. I understand. What we're talking about is something completely different. And the responsibility is something that we need to discuss. So. I look forward in the next uh, 15 months to having difficult conversations. I encourage you to reach out to me and discuss those things with me. And I, I really, truly, hopefully uh, look forward to building policy that would support that. And what we can all do today is love each other, listen to each other, and continue to have those difficult conversations and again, elect the right people to office.
So that is all of our time for today. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being here and thank you for listening. And I look forward to doing a lot more of that and seeing you on the trail. <laughs> Thank you.